Yeah, so Helix, we have a lot of things. You can start a chapter. Um, you can do blog writing, tutoring. We have we host hackathons, social media, and other seminars like this. And you can join us on Discord via helixscience.org. And I'll be putting this link in chat later. And to sign up for the other science nights, which will be continuing throughout summer, um, the website is down there. And I'll also be putting that one in chat. And finally, it's time to meet our amazing speaker, Isabella Tran. So Isabella is a high school senior at Westlake High School in Austin, Texas. She has competed in math contests since fourth grade and attended MOP in 2020. Besides math contests, she also conducted math mathematics research at our site in 2020, 2021. When not working, she enjoys writing and listening to music. So without further ado, let's begin. Oh, uh, hey, can you let me turn on my video? <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Is it not letting you? Uh, yeah, it, uh, it says I can't actually turn it on. Um, oh, okay, I think I have to make you a co-host, so I'll do that right now. Okay. All right, okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me, give me a second to pull up my presentation. And yeah, let's, uh, just out of curiosity, uh, in the Q&A section, no, or in, like in the chat, can you like, let me know like what grade everyone is in? Because like uh, I can focus more on like, so I can decide whether I could focus more on like starting math or uh, like, you know, more high school or things as opposed to middle school or vice versa. Okay, nice. We seem to have like a, Pretty good variety, um, mostly in high school. Sounds good. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so just a little bit about me. Uh, I'm an RSI scholar this year, and I'm also a MOP qualifier back in 2020. And I also competed in uh, the AMC series, like USAMO and Amy. Uh, I also uh, had found some, su some success in PUMAC, Math Count State, uh, Math Prize for Girls, and HMMT. Uh, so when I started math, I actually started relatively young, but I didn't really, uh, like, I was, I always knew I really liked math, uh, but I actually didn't get into competitions until about, like, fifth grade or so, and I started doing contests, uh, like, around fourth or fifth grade. I started doing contests with the AMC 8, and I became more involved in my local math community in, at around fifth grade and middle school. Uh, some of my first contests were the AMC 8 and just AMC series, BOEMs, and math counts for all of you middle schoolers out there. And uh, one recommendation I have if you would like to start getting into math contests is to join Math Club or find your local math circle. It's really, it's a really great way to make friends. Um, my school does not have a terribly large, like math, competitive math community. So I had to branch out a bit to my city. And there are actually a lot of people in the city who can, um, who are really interested in math. So it's been a lot of fun getting to know them and getting to work with them on, uh, and like help, help each other, like work on contests and stuff. Um, so I guess just general uh, classes and contact, uh, contest prep. Um, I took a lot of my, I got a lot of my books and classes from AOPS or Art of Problem Solving. Uh, I would recommend the problem series classes and Woot. Uh, but honestly, I didn't read that many books. Um, that might not be a great thing. I It, it all depends like person per person. But um, my biggest a uh, way to practice was just do a bunch of problems. Like that is more important than doing any classes or contest prep. Like if you have if you have the knowledge, that's great, but you need to also know how to apply it to a uh, specific math contest. Uh, as for camps, I, I did idea math and um, the math works summer camps, but those are specifically in Texas. So um, that uh, those might not be necessarily ideal depending on where you are. Uh, so math is a real, so just uh, some stuff about my experience as a whole, math is a really big part of my life, um, probably bigger than school. I would 
wager I probably spend more time doing math preparations than I do on actual schoolwork. Uh, it's introduced me to a lot of uh, wonderful people and some of my best friends, and it's been my favorite thing to do for years. And I, I still, be, I wholly believe that you can't really get good at something unless you're really, you really like it. Uh, first, it's not like if you're, if you're being forced to do a thing, then uh, you probably shouldn't keep doing that thing because that's not very sustainable. Eventually, you're just gonna burn out. Um, so one of my favorite memories is winning HMT sweepstakes with uh, some of my best friends. Um, and celebrating afterwards. Uh, also, some more specific things. I did get lucky a fair few times um, with contests, especially like uh, <laughs> like my first my first Amy qualifi uh, qualification actually came from guessing. So, uh, if you want some all around advice, like uh, don't be afraid to guess on like the AMCs. And even if you do badly, you can always um, it always. It, it like every failure is a learning opportunity in math contests because it's all it, it shows you what you're good at and what you're not and um like i'll touch more about that in the next slide but uh don't one thing that a lot of people are afraid of when it comes to math contests is doing badly and that uh that's like not something you should be afraid of because it every failure helps you improve and um yeah no one's never like I could go on with like some uh, generic platitudes about not failing, but uh, the point is uh, you can't get good without slipping a few times. Um, so now uh, this is not as fluffy. So uh, let's talk about plateaus and burnout. So plateauing basically means you don't get, you're not improving for a while. And I hit my plateau in my middle school years, um, which was around peak math count season. Uh, what happened then was I spent all my time doing math counts and not any time actually doing hard math questions because math counts is like middle school math. And then uh, for a person who's trying to make like an Olympiad, that is not a, that's not a good way to go. Um, so I didn't really push myself to improve in harder questions. Uh, if you really want to improve, uh, you are going to have to push, push yourself outside of your comfort zone. Um, really strive to you know, like patch up your weaknesses. If you find yourself being really like good at fast contests, uh, make sure that you're good in like slower, harder contests. Um, burnout is another issue that I've struggled with over the years and it's really annoying. And sometimes I'll go like for weeks or something without doing math. Don't go too long without doing math um, or doing whatever STEM competition that you plan, or, like um, that you're really interested in. Um, but it's not like a bad thing to take a break. Uh, don't force yourself to do math or do or, or like or study when you really don't want to. Make sure you just keep practicing like a little at a time. If you find yourself in like a really bad funk and you just want to do nothing but watch Netflix all day, like that's relatable. But you should still like hop out of bed and maybe do like a couple questions, and eventually you'll get yourself back into a place where you can do more questions. Um, Another thing that I uh, that I would recommend is figuring out which contests you don't feel exhausted after doing. Like if I'm going to do a mock Amy and I'm going to take three hours out of my day to do a mock Amy, uh, I'm going to be dead for the rest of the day and I will not like and I'm not going to enjoy that whole process, even though I do technically like Amy. Uh, on the other hand, I do like math count sprint rounds because they're only like 40 minutes. I could just do them really quickly um, and they're um, and I don't know, I, I just find like the rush of doing a bunch of questions at, in a short amount of time, like really interesting. So I enjoy doing those in my spare time. And I like, ne they don't necessarily help me improve, but they help me stay in kind of a math mood. Um, on the other hand, you do have to kind of uh, bite the bullet and do the question, do kind of the contest that you don't like every now and then. Like sometimes I'll just have to strap myself down and uh, make myself do an Olympiad problem or something, which I don't enjoy, but that's that helps me improve. And lastly, this is probably the most important thing. Identify your strengths and weaknesses and work on both of those. Um, your strengths and weaknesses could be in subjects. Like you could be really good at algebra and really bad at geometry. That happens to a lot of people. I know lots of people who just hate geometry with a burning passion. Um, that's good that you're good at algebra though. Um, and it can actually be like a very defining feature. Like um, especially when it comes to contests that are like 
HMMT or PUMAC, where they have rounds that are just algebra round, just geometry round, just number theory. Um, in, if, you, if you're good at with those, then you can find yourself winning a bunch of awards there. Um, that being said, for a contest like the AMC series, you make you want to make sure that you're at least somewhat well-rounded. Like you can't look at a number one on the AMC that's that has like an inkling of geometry and just like freeze up. Um, another thing about strengths and weaknesses, it's not just subjects, it's also kind of what you're good at in terms of um, a specific contest. Are you good? Are you really accurate? Um, are you really fast? And are you really good at hard questions? Uh, I think some people will put it as power, accuracy, and speed. Um, you can think of those as like stats in like a game. Um, and you want to make sure that you're at least good with some of those. So sometimes, so make sure you know what you're good at. Like, are you, do, are you good at tackling really hard questions? Uh, are you good at doing lots of fast questions or so on? And then make sure to improve your the other areas too. Uh, so a bit of a side tangent. I know I've been talking lots about math contests, but now let's talk about research, uh, especially since Helix Initiative is a research program. Uh, for any STEM-oriented students, and not just math, uh, research is a really great way to stretch yourself in a topic that you're already interested in. Uh, and it's a really great alternative to contests if those are too intense, which I totally get. That's the case for a lot of people. And, you, and if you want like a really big project that you want to work on in a long span of time that you just gradually improve, that is research is definitely a way to go. Um, so some ways you could do those. Uh, you can uh, you first you can look into programs. Helix is one of those. Um, there are also some summer programs that are specific to those that I can't list them off the top of my head, uh, but Third, you can definitely find some. Uh, another another idea is you could reach out to college professors near you. Some people call this cold emailing. You just email them out of the blue and say, "Hey, I want to do research with you." Uh, and this is I don't have the guts to do this myself, but some people have done well with it, and kudos to them. Um, sometimes you can actually get some pretty great research done this way um, if you just like have a bit of courage. And lastly, publishing a paper is a really cool achievement and. Um, it's it's something that like a lot of like as a as a high schooler uh, you get to really enjoy that feeling of doing something that a lot of adults struggle with and it also looks really great on college resumes but uh, that's kind of like a bonus. Um, this picture is me at the IEEE um, CCWC conference in 2020. Um, I was presenting a paper on the uh, 3D uh, surface reconstruction algorithm. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, really intimidating because most of the people there were like PhDs, but like uh, it was still a lot of fun and they had good food and we won like, and we won some awards. So that was also really nice. It did cost a lot to go though. And uh, lastly, if I haven't convinced you yet, why should you do math? Uh, here is some last few reasons. For me, I really appreciate math for mostly like the really great community. The math community, uh, some people are toxic, but that is the case for like any community, but most of the people I've met are really, really nice. And they're like glad to give advice to people who are getting into it. And, um, yeah, and not, not all just like really repressed nerds. <laughs> uh, math is also really good for developing self-esteem uh, sorry, self-esteem. That is one of them. I didn't put it here. Self-esteem, self-discipline and problem solving skills. Um, like. I think a lot of people in, and actually helps you a lot with like research. Um, this is it, it seems kind of weird to list like contests and research being like intertwined somewhere, but they are uh, because a lot of the problem solving skills I gain from doing contests end up being really applicable for my research projects. Um, another good thing about math is that it's really applicable to like any STEM area you could desire. Physics, applied math. Computer science, also math. There's a lot, like a lot of the operators in there require lots of math. It's a lot of combinatorics too. Even bi even biology. I don't even like biology, but computational bio is a very nice marriage between bio and math. And I know, and there's a lot of stuff happening in that area. So it's really, really interesting. Like computational oncology is a super big field right now. Um, I personally think math is really fun. And though some people might not agree, I it's uh, I think the rush of doing a contest is something special that I just don't find somewhere else. There's definitely a learning curve getting into contest math, 
is very different from doing school math and acing and getting a hundred on like a calculus test. Uh, but it's still extremely interesting, extremely rewarding, uh, especially since you can't usually find like number theory in like a math in a math classroom. And lastly, you can start at pretty much any time. Um, I know there are a lot of high schoolers in here, but there's like there's no age limit except until when you get to college. But there's no age limit to high school math contests. At uh, for the time being, and you can still do well. I know lots of people who started in like mid high school and they still ended up like getting a few awards and overall finding the experience to be really rewarding. Um, so that is my spiel about, uh, about math contests and math research and I'm open to questions. Thank you so much Isabella for that presentation. I really liked your enthusiasm about math. It makes me want to start doing math every day. <laughs> And also, um, awesome. yeah, like Isabella said, you can put like questions in the chat or the Q&A. Mm -hmm. My favorite subject at school, uh, I would say math, except sometimes it can get really boring. Uh, but <laughs> aside from math, I guess, I really enjoyed taking physics this year. Um, it was good that I had a good teacher, but um, having a good math background helped a lot with that. Uh, so I've actually thought a lot about what I plan on doing in college and I don't really, uh, even with all my talk about like loving all of math, I don't really like comp like pure math or just abstract algebra and stuff. Um, I do see myself going into either applied math or st statistics, since both of those are really applicable in the real world. And um, I, I also don't see myself doing, uh, like proving stuff on whiteboards all day. Um, I might also venture into computer science and or physics, but we'll see. Um, for good problem sets, um, my like I usually go on AOPS and they have a, in their wiki has a bunch of old contests and old contests are probably the best way to prepare. So here, I'll put a link in the chat and you, it, that's just like a little gold mine of contests. If, um, if you're, if you've already done like a lot of those, um, if you've already done a lot of those like AMC questions, then you can venture out to like the college contests, like HMMT, they're not college level. They're just hosted at colleges like HMMT, PUMAC, Math Prize for Girls, they have a bunch of, they have like an archive of all of their old contests and you can just mock test them to your heart's desire. Um, how to learn math. Practice. <laughs> um, I guess learning math, you might wanna look into books, like first learning, like the different areas of contest math, you might wanna look into like books or online classes. Um, and after you've learned those, you can practice those in with problems. Um, my favorite AOPS books, I like volume one and volume two. They're really general. They have like pretty much every contest subject and they're just really comprehensive and well-written. Lots of uh, really great way to start doing computational math. Uh, other extracurriculars, I do orchestra. That's probably the biggest one. And um, I don't know, not much else. Uh, I I don't do sports or anything like that. I, I sit at home and I write on, I write on paper. <laughs> that that doesn't count, but it's it's athletic enough for me. Um, I guess like aside from the stuff I do strictly at school, I do enjoy lots of creative writing. Um, 
I haven't published a book or anything. I wish I, I wish I could say I did, uh, but I do enjoy writing lots of fiction and it's a really great way to de-stress. Uh, do I still have a time for activities? Um, these days, not much. I've been really focused on math research and doing math contests, math contest prep. So uh, not terrible, uh, not a ton of time for other things besides those. Um, I do make sure like, I do make sure to get like the bare minimums, like make sure to go outside and breathe some fresh air. <laughs> um, aside from those, I practice violin every once in a while, but since it's summer, I haven't had much time to do those. Uh, how much time do I spend on math every day? That is a really good question. The best answer I get, I can give, I, I it's hard for me to give a number because some days I cannot do math. Some days I'll have like a paper due the next day and I can't, I, I literally cannot do math. Um, but on the weekends when I don't have homework, I will just like do as much math as I can. Um, so I do have a friend though, who's really successful, who makes sure, makes sure to leave one hour of math to do every day, like um, non-negotiable. Like she, she just treats it as like a block of time that she cannot do anything else but math. And it's like an hour is not too much time. And I think that is like a really good way to structure your time. If you, if you have like a schedule, if you have like a schedule, then go for it. I'm not that organized. So I will just do it whenever I can. Um, I would recommend probably like at least seven hours a week. If you really want to improve, um, then shoot for more. But the best thing I can say is don't put a number on it. The quality of work that you do is better than the quantity. If you do a bunch of hard questions that really challenge you, that is a better use of your time than doing the first 10 questions on an AMC 8. Um, and these days, research has taken up all my time, so I haven't done any contests, sadly. Um, my RS, RSI project, oh, I'd love to talk about it. I don't do science fair, actually. Um, I do have friends who do. It sounds super interesting, but um, I don't do, like, I don't know. Science fair just seems much more oriented towards, like, not math, like uh, biochem physics, which aren't really my cups of tea, so I haven't done those. But my RSI project is, it, it is actually pure math. I, I'm working on graph theory. And while I'm not sure how much, how, like how many really deep details I could go without like going on a full scale ramble, um, I can say that my contest math experience has helped me a lot with not necessarily the actual math involved, but with finding creative solutions to answers. That is something that you don't really find in say school. <laughs> um, and last night I spent a while working on my penultimate paper and it's been like, I've make sure to devote like at least an hour of my time, definitely more on certain days on just working on the paper or working on the math. Uh, what does, and if you're wondering what math research looks like, uh, it, it depends on what, of course. Sometimes some people with math will do like, like lots of coding to figure out like an algorithm to do something. Mine has had no coding, which is great for me because I am not great at coding. Um, instead, it is actually kind of stereotypical squint at a whiteboard and draw lines and sometimes yell in frustration. Um, but yeah, I, I still find it really fun. Uh, my experience of RSI, busy. Um, really busy, really fun. I've met a lot of really great friends. I've said really like three times. Um, really interesting lectures. There are lots of very distinguished figures who show up and give talks. Um, and the research itself is really is really interesting. I have to give massive props for them to them for assigning me like a project that orients real, almost perfectly with the things I'm interested in. Um, how to, uh, so first I need to answer how to prepare for math contests. Uh, Sue, you asked that earlier, and I sorry for skipping you there. Um, 
just practice. Uh, one, okay, so first of all, you have to know the base material, which is something that you get from books or classes or sometimes a teacher if you have those. Then you have to make sure to use that knowledge to practice with questions. You have to do, I don't have a number for it, but make sure you do like lots of questions and at least familiarize yourself with whatever contest you're about to take. Is it the AMC 10 where you have to go kind of quick and do multiple choice questions? Is it the Amy where you have three hours to do not that many questions, but the ones at the end will melt your brain? Um, is it an Olympiad where you stare at three questions for four and a half hours and just cry? Um, Whatever the contest is, you have to make sure you're familiar with the format, difficulty, and just like how to do questions that will generally appear on those. Uh, how do I, how do you get started with how did I get started with math research? Um, I went to Honor Summer Math Camp, which is a really great program for kind of like dipping your toes into research. I'm not sure how great it is for actually getting like publishable research, uh, but it is really good for like getting started on it. Um, yeah. Um, which math contest I've participated? Oh, I've, partici I've participated in a lot. First of all, my least favorite has to be the AMC contests. I know they're like the white bread of math contests. They're ubiquitous. A lot of people have taken them once in their life. I hate them. <laughs> they're such an isolating math contest. Like you are in a room like you're you get you get stuck into like a conference room or a testing room of some kind and you just write and you just do math on your own completely silent um often with people who you don't know very well very and it's very score focused there are no you don't get an, a fancy award ceremony at the end it's just it's so quiet and so isolating that I think it almost, I think it almost defeats the purpose of a math contest, which is like really getting to know that, like gaining connections and experience from other people as well. Um, my favorite ones are the ones where you get to travel for contests. So if you're willing to spend a bit of money for that, then go right on ahead. Um, so long as you get to see people and do con and do math contests and then like talk with them afterwards about your favorite questions. Those are great contests. For any girls who are listening to the talk right now, Math Prize for Girls. That is a fantastic contest. Um, it's held at MIT every year and uh, they have massive cash prizes, but more than that, you get to meet girls who do math, which is a rare sight to see. Most of my math friends are guys, so it is really refreshing to get to meet other girls. Um, another favorite of mine, um, Math Counts. I, I mentioned that math counts kind of dulled my progress with getting good at math, but I don't regret it because math counts is still really fun. It's a team experience, which is really great for getting to know your teammates and other people at your school who do math. Um, it's fast paced, which means you don't have to spend hours in a testing room having your brain melted. And more than that, you get awards and stuff and you get trophies and that's all very fun. But like that depends on person to person. If you if you find joy in sitting at a desk and like really thinking about the problems, then I bet you'll enjoy the AMCs a lot. If you enjoy talking to people, sitting next to your friends while doing contests and like um, the, the award ceremonies or parties or lunches that you get to do afterwards, then be like me and do like travel-based contests or map counts. Uh, which colleges? MIT is the dream one. Um, I'm also going to, uh, I also think um, CMU, Carnegie Mellon, and that one's, that's also a pretty good school. Um, and in general, I'll just look into like STEM oriented schools. So MIT is like the highest on my list though. UT Austin, which is like a 20 minute drive for me. That's also like a pretty good school for computer science, especially. And I have not started on my college applications if you're wondering. Um, I, I have decided to just procrastinate those for now. Oh, okay. Uh, Katie, thank you so much for asking that. Uh, how to stay motivated. Um, that's a good question. And sometimes I don't have a, I don't have a rock solid answer, but I will give it my best shot. 
Um, the biggest thing is to really, in, so first, make sure you take breaks. That is probably the biggest thing. Um, I have tried to have like a schedule where I do nothing but math the whole day. It has ended in nothing but exhaustion and uh, me getting just like completely demotivated in the middle of doing a mock test. Um, if you treat it, sometimes if you treat it like a game, that's a lot of fun. Like set, like instead of doing the full time of a contest, set it to half time. How many AMC questions can you do in 40 minutes instead of the full 75? Um, that is a really fun way to just keep challenging yourself, keep yourself on your toes. Um, a good, another good thing is don't spend like a really big chunk of time doing the, uh, doing a contest. Like even, even if you're at the Olympiad level, you don't want to, I would not recommend doing mock Olympiads until you're getting close to contest day and you want to get in like in the, con in the contest vibe, just do like, just think about Olympiad problems slower and like over a larger span of time. Um, so Q and A, uh, any ways to make doing math fun? Um, I mentioned this in the slideshow. I first identify the contests that you enjoy, whether that's fast contests or slow contests. Um, sometimes you don't have to do mock contests at all and just take a few questions and do those. Um, another thing I do is I keep a Google Doc of questions that I have difficulties with doing, whether I just did not understand the solution at all, I understood the solution, but there's no way I could have thought of that. Uh, I was really close, but I didn't get it, or I did the I, I solved the question, and then I would just like try to brush up on the questions that were like on the harder end of the spectrum and that I had more difficulty with. Um, with that, it becomes very satisfying with taking the hard questions that at first you didn't know how to do, and then like solving them and maybe even write up your solution in like really pretty font or something if you're feeling artsy. Um, it you can feel yourself improving, and that is like one of the best things I can say for keeping yourself feeling like you're doing something, like you're not just hitting yourself on a brick wall. Uh, math counts, uh, math counts, you usually have to look for like a school thing. So if your school has a math club, go for it. Um, I saw some questions pop up in the chat. Um, did I learn all contest math on my own? At first, when I started getting into it, yes, I did have to kind of um, look into things on my own, usually with online resources. AOPS is a good place to go for that. Um, afterwards, I started, you know, building up that community and learning from other people. Um, I had like a math circle that I would go to weekly where we would learn like Olympia topics um, and also online classes and books. Those are also good places. Uh, did I participate in math study groups? Yes, uh, the math circle in my city. And they helped me stay motivated simply because of peer pressure. Uh, if you see lots of other people doing well, then you will want to do well as well. Um, a lot, but it's also not, not like a bad sort of peer pressure where you're feeling really bad among other people. There's sometimes where you'll do your, you'll solve a question, you get to explain it to other people and that feels super rewarding. Um, there are sometimes where you get to learn from other people um, and getting to do mock contests together. That's also just really fun. And yeah, it, it's almost like doing a math contest in itself, getting to have like a community to do it with. Okay, any tips for math competitions? And okay, this is also a really good question. So first, managing time in a fast contest. This is a really important thing and there's no one size fits all. Generally, um, first of all, if you see an early question that you cannot do for whatever reason, like your brain is freezing up, skip it and move on. You do not want to spend all your time doing some easy question. Just skip it. It will still be in your brain. So you can kind of like unconsciously think of it. And then when you come back to it later, it'll, it'll be, you'll have fresh eyes. For example, uh, this year's AMC 12, I was stuck on number like what 12 and that's like really early for like a, math, a really early place to get stuck so i was like okay well i don't have time to work on this now so i went ahead and did later questions i went back to 12 um and it ended up being like a lot easier than i remembered it being so i ended up just like cutting it down pretty quickly um 
just budget your time and don't spend too much time on a single question. You should strive to knock out, um, think of how many questions you wanna do at a certain time and then make sure you do them. And if you're not able to do that, then that's fine. But um, keep an eye on like what, where you wanna be at a certain time. Be conscious of where you are. Now, for the next half of the question, which was staying calm, that is a really, that is also a good question and something I still struggle with a lot. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I uh, I get really nervous between con before contests. I have I just I I start shaking. I like I get no appetite. Uh, I like stare at the questions and sometimes freeze. I still don't have like a rock solid um, answer for how to just like be zen and calm. Um, firstly, get enough sleep. This is a lot easier said than done because sometimes I will literally just be tossing and turning the night before. But if you get enough sleep, then you already feel like you're kind of in fighting form. Um, secondly, don't put that much mental stake on it. And that is kind of a weird thing to say, but think of it as detachedly as possible. Like, don't care about the score. The world will not be over if you do not make Amy or the Olympiad or whatever. It will, like, people don't care as much as you think they might. Some that I still have to tell myself that because I put a lot of stake on, on, on scores. But I find myself doing the best when I am just calm in there to do the fun questions. Um, like, in my sophomore year, I completely tanked the AMCs. Like, I made Amy barely. And then the Amy, I was like, I had an attitude of whatever, whatever happens, happens. And I sat there and I got like the best score I had ever gotten in like in all my years. So that's like, it's like the difference in mindset just made all the difference. Um, okay, so RSI, how to apply. I, I can talk a bit about the application process. So RSI, very, very lengthy application. Be prepared to spend your entire winter break just grinding it. Um, there are five essays and the essays are very long. There, I think the four of them have a maximum of 5,000 characters. The last one has a maximum of 2,000 characters. So expect that to be like 800, 900 words. That'll be a lot more than college apps. Um, so that's that. I think the prompts are like the same every year. So uh, you can probably like look them up. I don't remember them off the top of my head. Um, you'll have to list out your achievements. If you have a prior publication or research experience, that is a major ace card. Like I know people who do really well in contests who get the boot because they have never been in a, re like, been in a research environment before. Uh, like the, I have a friend from a different state. She and I have very similar profiles and she's actually a bit better than me in contest math, but I had, a, but I did a research conference. So, and she had not. So that made all the difference. Um, but being good at research and contests ends up putting you in like a very good position. Um, What else do they ask for? Um, they ask for good recommendations. So um, if you've been to like a particular summer camp in the past, then you can ask them. Or if you have a teacher that really likes you, or like a STEM teacher who really likes you, then that's also a good option. Or a research mentor. They will literally ask you, if you have a research mentor, can you have them send a rec? Um, that's also um, that's also a reason why you should do research before, uh, before applying. Mm. And then lastly, like, I don't know, just like make sure to spend, like the essays are probably like one of the biggest things. So uh, there are some people that I know who wrote like a, like a fantastic essay and then they end up doing well. Um, like they end up getting it and stuff. So make sure you spend a lot of time on your essays, send them to other people to look at um, and just, get more than one a pair of eyes to look at it and hopefully that will make them like good essays but like rsi is really hard so don't freak out <laughs> um 
And there are plenty of, and there are also like plenty of other summer camps um, to look into. Uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I guess Promise, that's also like, in terms of good math camps, there's Promise, Ross, Sumac. Um, but in general, you could just like Google math camps and there will be like tons and tons. Uh, ooh, HSMC. Uh, tips for applying to HSMC. If you went to JSMC, that like that is already like a really big step up for in in terms of your app. Like, um, they will um, the director really likes uh, really likes letting people in if they've had experience with MathWorks before. Um, besides that, um, having just showing like a lot of interest in math. Um, make sure you're just like like there. It's not a super long application Men mention like your math achievements or your math experiences, your grades, um, and write one essay about why you're really interested in math. I think the essay is probably like the biggest, um, big biggest component. If, um, if you're not super competition savvy, then right. And then make sure to channel like all of your interests in the essay when you get to talk about, um, like what really drives you to do math and stuff. And, don't worry, like lots of people at HSMC or like the that level math, math camp, they some of those have them have like barely touched contests. They are just like really interested in learning more about math. Um, like especially like higher level math that you learn at like college, which I haven't even dipped my toes into that much, but um, that is that ends up being like a really big um foot up when it comes to you versus other applicants. Okay, is that, um, is that everyone? If you have any last co uh, questions, then feel free to ask. Um, Okay, uh, thank you so much for coming, guys. Um, and yeah, um, I can leave my email in here if you if you are curious about contacting me afterwards. Um, here, let's just keep all. Um, yeah, check out Helix's Discord. And um, yeah, uh, AMZ12, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just take this last question and then we'll call. Um, so AMZ12, I forgot to mention this in the slides. Uh, AMZ12, I would recommend that over AMZ10. If you plan on making, if you, if you, if you're a person who is, who is trying to make Amy, you should go for AMZ12 instead of AMZ10. Why? Because you have to answer fewer questions. And the topics that are on AMC 12 aren't even that much harder than the AMC 10. It's like logarithms, trig, and complex numbers, all of which uh, on earlier, um, like in earlier parts of the AMCs, like they're not terribly tr tricky. You just have to know a couple of tricks. So with those few extra tricks, you have to solve like what, 15 questions to qualify for AMC. And that is like the sole reason why I think AMC 12 is, uh, probably easier to qualify to for Amy for because AMC 10, you have to answer like what 19 questions. And that's that's hard to do like really quickly and accurately. And 
but uh, for some people that's more ideal and I totally get that. Okay, so uh, I'll be heading off now, but thank you guys so much for coming and yeah, uh, make sure to check out all of the awesome opportunities that Helix off offers. And uh, thank you so much for having me. I thank really you so much, appreciate Isabella. Um, I really, we really appreciate it and we hope to have you maybe another time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you. I'd love to come back. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you guys for coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye. bye.